Archimedes, who is arguably the greatest mathematician in all of history, was able to find that pi is always less than 3 and 1 7, and it's always bigger than 3 and 10 71st. And the way he found this result was actually quite clever. He started with a couple circles, and in one of them, he circumscribes a six-sided regular polygon. Circumscribe just means to put the polygon around the circle. And the word regular just means that this polygon has all equal sides. So this side, this side, this side, and so on are all equal to each other. And the angles of this polygon are also all equal to each other. And in the second circle, he inscribes a six-sided regular polygon. Notice that the polygon is entirely within this circle. And his argument is very simple. He says that the length around the circumscribed polygon, or in other words, the perimeter of this polygon, the perimeter of the circumscribed polygon is always bigger than the length around the circle which we call the circumference. So I'll denote that as C. And for the inscribed polygon, the length around the circle is always bigger than the length around the perimeter of the polygon. So the circumference is always bigger than the perimeter of the inscribed polygon. So with these two circles, Archimedes was able to find an upper and a lower bound for pi since remember that if we set the length across the circle equal to 1, then the length around is just pi. And by using larger and larger polygons, the estimate for the upper and lower bounds of pi becomes more and more accurate. So he starts with these six-sided polygons, and then he doubles this to a 12-sided polygon, and he does it for both inscribed and circumscribed polygons. So here you can see the 12 sided polygon. And notice that since we doubled the sides, this polygon approximates the circle much better than the 6 sided polygon. And he doesn't stop at 12. Next he goes to 24 sides for both the inscribed and circumscribed polygons. And even at 24 sides, you can barely notice the difference between the polygon and the circle. So you can imagine with really large sided polygons, that this approximation is very close. And after 24 sides, he goes to 48 sides, and he stops when he gets to 96 sides. And using these 96-sided regular polygons, he's able to find that pi is always less than 3 and 1 7, and it's always bigger than 3 and 10 71st. So the math for finding these upper and lower bounds is simplest for six-sided polygons, but once you get to 12-sided or above, it becomes a little bit trickier. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to find the lower bound for the six-sided polygon, just so that you have an idea of how Archimedes actually did this. So if I scroll down, I have an inscribed six-sided polygon, which we refer to these polygons as hexagons. And remember that the circumference of the circle is always bigger than the perimeter of the inscribed polygon. So what we need to do is find this perimeter. And the way to find the perimeter of this hexagon is to divide this hexagon into six triangles. And once we divide the hexagon into these six triangles, we can notice right away that all of these lengths are equal to each other since each of them is just the radius of the circle since this is the center point of the circle and we can also notice that each of these angles on the inside are also equal to each other and this should be clear since each of these points are equally spaced so if all of these are equal and there are six of them and to go once around in a circle is 360 degrees that means each angle is 360 degrees divided by 6, which gives us 60 degrees. So each of these are 60 degrees. So if we can figure out these angles on each of the triangles, then we can figure out this third side here. 
and this third side will help us find the perimeter of the polygon since each of these sides are equal to each other. And notice that these two angles have to be equal to each other because the sides opposite the angles are both equal to each other. So I can call each of these angles x. And with this, we can say that the sum of the angles in any triangle has to add up to 180 degrees. So in other words, twice this angle x plus 60 degrees has to equal 180 degrees. So with this equation, I can find that x has to also be 60 degrees. Since if I double this, I get 120. And then if I add 60 to 120, I get back 180. So if all of these angles are equal to each other, that implies that each of these triangles are equilateral triangles. And if they're equilateral, that means that all of the side lengths are equal to each other. So in other words, this third side of the triangle here is also equal to the radius of the circle. And remember that pi is defined as the circumference of the circle divided by the diameter of the circle. So I can rewrite this as the circumference is equal to pi multiplied by the diameter. And the diameter is just twice the radius, so I can replace this d with twice the radius. These are multiplied together. And to make the math simple, we can set the radius equal to 1. So r is just 1 in this case. So our circumference is just twice pi. And to find the perimeter, we just need to note that these side lengths here are all equal. And they're all equal to the radius. And there are six of them. So the perimeter is just 6 multiplied by each of these sides. But these sides are just equal to the radius. So the perimeter is just 6 times the radius. And we set the radius equal to 1, so the perimeter is just 6. So we can conclude that since the circumference is bigger than the perimeter, then this means that 2 pi is bigger than 6. And if I divide each side by 2, I find that pi is bigger than 3. And this right here is our first lower bound. And you can apply a very similar argument to a circumscribed six-sided polygon. It's only slightly more complicated than this. And this technique of using large inscribed and circumscribed polygons to find the value of pi was used for almost the next 2,000 years. And in the next video, I'll discuss which mathematicians actually use this method.